Hey guys, uh, today I'm doing a line art with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida Copic Proof and Waterproof Brush Pin. It's got twin tips, a large side, which I don't use all that often, and the smaller detail side, which I use a lot. And I'm going to be inking this cute little kid witch, which was sketched with, um, I want to say HB Mechanical Pencil Lead at, on Strathmore 400 Series um, mixed media paper. And um, after I ink this and it's cured for 24 hours, I'm going to color it with Copic markers. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, um, if you do sort of manga-styled or manga-inspired um, art, I recommend you try and keep the line art on the hair lighter than the line art on um, large objects like this hat here. Um, it just helps to push a sort of light fluffiness. Um, and I got a little heavy right here, and that's not really a big deal, but ideally I should have kept all of my hair's line weight the same weight as that curl right there. So, I have um, the hat, the arms, and the outline of the face already inked. Usually what I would do is I would ink the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and then do the outline. But I chose not to do that for whatever reason that this... Chose not to do it that way for whatever reason that time, and that's fine. Um, inking, once you've kind of got a rhythm that you like, um, you just kind of go into the zone. So, don't think you have to do things a certain way because I'm doing them that way so I'm going to ink the eyes next and the way I like to do it is I generally like to ink the lower lashes the upper lashes and then the interior of the eyes and I like to do this sort of like scoop sort of thing I mean grab a piece of scrap paper and I can show you for the lower lash so that your eyelash cups the eye like that and that would be the corner of the eye right there. And that would be the upper lid, a very rough upper lid. The other corner. And then the interior of the eye like so. And then sometimes I like to draw the, the back corner of the eye. Um, sometimes I'll do lashes. But I actually don't draw lashes all that often because with eye lashes as heavy as this, those additional lashes tend to look a little bit like too much going on at one time and if you want your lashes to look a little bit lighter leave some white space um, between the lines you put down and this ink tends to stay wet for a moment so you want to give it an opportunity to dry otherwise you'll smear it with your hand So that's the exterior outline of the, line, of the eye. That's the interior. And um, if you guys are having problems lining up your eyes, 
what I like to do is um, I have a couple of tutorials on drawing faces um, and I have some chibi drawing tutorials as well where I think I explain how I divide the face up. Um, so if you drew a line down the middle of the face and you drew um, one eye right there in the middle, your other two eyes should be placed on either side of that um, and it might be easier. If I quickly demonstrate this for you, and this works in three-fourths view as well as in a regular front-facing view, so I'm going to sketch it in three-fourths view from the other direction. Okay, so let's say it's a very basic shape. A very, it is a ba very basic shape. It's a very basic face, and this let this is divides it in half going down, and this is divides it in half horizontally. So you're gonna have one eye with in between your actual eyes, and that'll help you place your eyes in pretty much any view you choose to draw. Once I get started doodling, it's like, oh, I want to keep doing it. Anyway, that's that's how you can easily and quickly place your eyes. Um, and if you're doing it in pencil rather than ink, you can erase it and nobody knows that you had to draw those guidelines in. Not that there's anything wrong with those guidelines, but on a finished piece, you might not want them. So now that the eyes are done, I'm going to go ahead and ink her eyebrows and her nose. And with eyebrows, I like for the underside of the eyebrow to be lighter than the top part um, because it implies a cast shadow. And it helps me to think of the nose as a triangle or um, a variety of triangular shapes. something else if you're really concerned about inking I recommend that you oh I'm gonna have to turn the notifications off on Skype it is being annoying <laughs> I thought if I had it up it wouldn't it wouldn't make the noises but somebody thinks I want to talk to them right now I don't really um, so the thing about inking is the thing most people are going to notice especially on on women or girls or small children is the face so if you get the face if all your best lines go on your face if you do your face first while you're still fresh um, that's the most important part everything else um, you can fix through how you shade it or um, placement of color, but you can't get away with doing that on the face. Because that is where people are going to focus the most, and it's the thing that humans are the most used to seeing, so they're going to pay the most attention to it. And I think I've mentioned this in an earlier video, but feel free to twist your paper around as much as you need to to get the angle that you need to properly draw a line. There is zero shame in twisting and turning your paper to get what you need done. So, one of the things I think is kind of magic about doing, um, like, watercolor or alcohol marker pieces is that once you start adding color, a lot of the minor mistakes that would really stand out in black and white, um, they become a lot less noticeable, if not invisible. And um, although when I'm working in color, I can't, I, I haven't found yet a, um, a correctional like a white correction fluid that doesn't form a minor resist against a watercolor or alcohol-based marker. So I have to make peace with whatever mistakes I make while inking. 
but some of those corrections can be made after the color has been applied. Like, um, hang on, let me add this shadow under the sleeve. Okay, so, <laughs> so, um, over here, the highlight on the jewel around her neck, um, it could be a little bit more even. So what I can do after this is all colored is I can just go back with the white correction fluid and just kind of add another white highlight on top of it. And the same might go for over here. So you can hide a lot of your flaws um, after you've applied your color as well. Okay, so um, that's about it so far with my Little Kid Witch inks. Um, I used a Sailor Mitzel Ida br double-sided brush pin, which is both water and Copic safe. Um, the only place in the U.S. that I know of where you can get these is jetpins.com. So if you like what you see, you should consider getting one. And if you do get one, you should drop my name, Becca Hilburn or Natto Soup, so they know who sent you. All right, guys, good luck with your inking. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you again when I'm coloring this. I'm Becca Hilburn. Um, bye. <laughs>